There are types of cards which are referred to as chip and pin cards, and these type of cards are, are very industry specific. And that industry is banks. Why banks? Because the, the information is too sensitive. It is too sensitive, and hence it has got to be it has got to be secured using a pin code. Right? So hence you use chip and pin cards when you go to retailers. I mean there are certain retail shops, remember last time we've discussed there are certain retail shops within Pakistan where you go and they won't swipe your card, right? Uh, uh, using that magnetic strip and fetching information out of that. Instead they will do what? They'll they'll offer you a chip and pin device and you've got to insert your card into it and half you got to insert halfway through it the chip side. Right, so that the machine, the input device could, the chip and pin reader could read the data out of it. But before the before it could process information, it would ask you for it. Okay. And it is the same pin that you use at your ATM. Right. Uh, so few of the uses is are uh, it is used to make payments at certain restaurants. I mean, they talked about the bank cards, which are your chip and pin. Cards. And similarly, what are few of the advantages? Allow secure transactions, save time in transactions, and they are more robust than the chips. What do you mean by that? They are with more. They are more durable. They are they are to last longer. Remember, I told you last time with the uh, with the magnetic strip cards, these types are. I mean, take for example, you've got a card that is two years old. Right, you go to a detail store and sometimes you see the guy sweating and swiping it over and over again. Why? Because it, the machine cannot read the data from the magnetic strip. But with the chip and pin cards is that normally banks provide chip and pin cards with a longer expiry, up to 10 years. Why? Because they know they are very robust. They are to last longer. I mean, look at your SIM cards even. Right? I, I, I know few of your friends or few of your family members might have same cards as old as 10 years or even more than that. Why? Because they are broken. These kind of these kind of smart cards are robust, right? Similarly, to the dis disadvantages, self-explanatory without a pin, uh, no transaction can take place. Now, that is a bit funny. I mean, it's not a disadvantage. That's what it is meant for, right? So, not to be the sensitive information is not to be disclosed, is not to be pressed out of the card without a pin. Number right now. Moving on. These are few of the screenshots. You've got your smart card. There are few types of chip and pin readers, right? And what you do is you insert your card halfway through in the chip side, and then it to process that information. It will ask you for a pin number, the same pin number you provide at your ATM, ATM, and then it will process the information for the pin, right? Uh, the next thing of is now set. Right? Now, I'm sure, can you tell me what device in this room that has got sensors? Very good. Air cons. Excellent. Air cons. Television. Television has got sensors. Phones. Very good. Now, before I go on to actually explain you the functioning of sensors and what they are, first I need to tell you what embedded devices are. If somebody's got slightest clue, he, he, she can share with me. Right, otherwise I'll tell you what the value devices are. But, uh, there are two types of computers. I mean there are many types of computers, but just, just to make you comprehend the concept, there is one computer which is right in front of me here. It is a personal computer, but it's a laptop machine, right? Right? But the beauty of this machine is I can do a lot of I can run a lot of applications here. Right? But there are other types of computers that are very small. They are referred to as micro chips or micro computers, right? But uh, these com these micro computers or micro chips are embedded into different devices like washing machines, like your air cons, air conditioners, right? Now what they do? They do the same. I mean, they've got specific. Here I can I can rewrite programs. I can run applications on my computer, but that computer chip has got a processor and it, it has got a ROM, read-only memory which has got specified instructions. Instructions of what? Instructions that are carried out to perform certain actions, right? So this computer chip would help the washing machine to operate. And if the temperature is lower or above a certain required preset value, it would alarm you. 
right? If the load within the washing machine is more or less than the, again the pre-check value, it would again alarm you, right? So all of that controlling is is done by that mini computer or called micro chip. Micro chip. The the ROM part, read-only memory part, right, where the instructions are written is referred to as ALU, and it's a massive logical unit. Now say what it is? <laughs> Why it is referred to as an arithmetic logical unit? Because it, it, it is based on numbers, it, it go on to um, involve mathematics, logical mathematics, right? If this equals this, do that. If this less than this, do that. If this greater than this, don't do this or don't do anything, right? Now, let me first tell you the functioning of a sensor and then I'll give you an example of air conditioner, how sensors work in air conditioner, right? A sensor is a tiny small device, tiny small device that can sense a physical variation or change in your physical environment. A sensor is a tiny device that can sense a change in your physical environment. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that that change is anticipated or that change is recorded by the sensor in the form of an analog signal. Wave. Grass and cup. Wave. Right? Who studied physics? Right? So you know what I'm talking about. The analog wave signal. Now, this signal from the sensor is to be sent where? It's to be, it's to be sent to the computer, the mini computer, the micro chip, right? Now, the problem is that your micro chip only understands one, zero ones, zero ones. It, it, it only understands binary codes, or in other words, it only understands digital data rather than analog data. So, so, and Whenever you would find sensors, and that sensors are to send data to a microchip, you would find an intermediary device. A very tiny again device that is referred to as ADC, which is analog to digital converter. ADC, what it is? Analog to digital converter. Now what it is? It converts analog signals into So any physical change that is that is recorded by the sensor is that when sent to the ADC, that converts into the digital and then it is sent to the computer. Now what the sensor does is the microchip does, does is takes that value and refers to its arithmetic logical unit where all the instructions are written. So let's say I'm using my air con and I've, I've set up a preset value of 20 which means I want the room temperature to be on 20, 20 right? So. Uh, the temperature, the sensor would do what? The sensor would sense and say, you now it's every second it's sensing. So at this part of the second, it senses 21, send to ADC, which is then turned into digital data. That digital data goes to the microchip, microchip. The processor in the microchip refers to the arithmetic logical unit in the room, right? And see for the instructions that if a value of 21 comes, what will be sense do nothing. And then the process goes on, and there is a time when the required temperature is achieved. And this second, the sensor is just recorded for. And this time round, the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit, where all the instructions are, it says that when it is 20, then do what? Shut off the compressor. Shut off the compressor. Right. So now, what further happens? Right? So arithmetic logic unit tells that okay, the new reading is now 20, it has been achieved, shut off the compressor. compressor. But how? The data from computer got to somehow travel to the compressor. Right? Now the problem is our all hardware mechanicals is all only understand analog signals. We don't understand each they only understand, <laughs> hence each mechanical hardware comes with a device called actuator or actuator. Actuator does only two things, on, off, on, off. Just like you've got fluctuation where the, where the, uh, the, uh, the alteration of something is not in your hands. 
but with the actuator, the alteration of something, the alteration of something is in your hand. Actual actuator, factual fluctuation, right? So it is in your hand. So what what it does is the computer part would send now a signal which is in binary codes, which is digital, but your actuator that can on and off the device only to stand to off and off signals. So you again need a very tiny device that is referred to as BAC. Digital to <laughs> So it will convert that analog and that analog would either have the crest, the top of the wave or the bottom of the wave. Bottom of the wave, shut off. Top of the wave, turn on the compressor. And that's how your compressor would either turn on or that's how your sensors Physical change. It has been sensed by the sensor, side to ADC, analog to digital converter, turn to the computer, mini chip, right? Mini chip refers to the ALU part, looks into the instructions what to do. Equal